Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you how you can read your external water meter. Now the reasons you might want to do this is because you might have just moved into a property or you might be moving out of a property and you want to update the bill accordingly. Or you might think you have a leak. If your water usage you think is a bit high, then you might want to actually see if you've got a leak on your side of the meter. So what you would do is, for example, in the morning you would take your meter reading and then you would go out to work for the day and if the house was empty and nobody was using any water in the house, so there was no washing machine or anything on, then when you come back to the house at the end of the day, you can take another meter reading. And obviously if it's gone up, then you know that there might be a leak somewhere. Now it might not be that noticeable. You might have, for example, a toilet system leak and it might only be dripping every now and then. You might not even notice it. But all those drips add up and then it can really increase your bill over the year. So if you're lucky, all you're gonna need is a flathead screwdriver like this or some flat object to prise open the lid and a pen and paper to read the meter reading. Other things you might need is, the cover might be for the debris, so you might wanna just brush the debris off the cover. The actual meter itself might have sediment on it, so you might need something to wipe it off. If you don't wanna get your lovely nails dirty, then you can wear some gloves because there can be a lot of slugs and dirt and debris down there. You might well need a torch, and if you're unlucky like me and there might be a high water table, then you're gonna to need to get the water out of it. If it's clear, hopefully with your torch, you can shine it through and read it. But once you start moving around the place, you get a bit of sediment and stuff like that, the water goes murky, then you can't get a meter reading. So what you can do is get yourself a siphon. This is just a very cheap kind of pound shop siphon, but it does the job just about. Or an easy option is just to get a sponge and put it in there, take it out, wring the water out, put it in, get it full of water and wring it out. So we're gonna go out now and uh, see what the state of my water meter is. Okay, so we're outside now and this is my water meter here. You can get different designs, but on this one here, you just need to prise it open here. So what I'm gonna do is just clean off the lid. And then I've got my flathead screwdriver here. I'm gonna put it in this part here and I'm gonna lever it up. Now it feels like you're gonna break it, but it is actually okay because you've just got these things here that clip into place and it just works by pressure. So you just need to lever it open. Now down here we have a polystyrene plug and that's to stop debris and also to protect the meter from frost. So you just need to pull that out. And as you can see there, in my instance, because the water level's quite high here, it's actually submerged in water. So I'm gonna have to siphon that out or you can use a sponge. So for example, if you have your sponge here, you can just pull it in there and then empty it out. And after about five minutes of doing that, you should find that you've got the water out of it. Right, you can see it's starting to come out now. This is gonna take a while, so I'm gonna come back when this is empty. Okay, so as you can see now, I've got the water out of it. By far, the quickest way to do that was just to use the sponge. It was much quicker than using the siphon. And now, if I look down here, you can see, if I get my torch, you can see that the meter reading is 580. As far as the meter reading is concerned, all we're interested in is the black digits there. So I'm just gonna write down 580. And now what the red digits mean is that they're part of a cubic meter. So for example, I have used 580 cubic meters. So a cubic meter is a thousand liters. So if you look at the red digits there, you can see it says 052. And what that means is that means that there's been 52 liters used. And when that gets up to 999, it will then turn into 581. So if you thought you had a leak, you would write down 580.052 and then you would check it later on. And if it was 580.053 and you were sure that there was no washing machine on or that nobody flushed a toilet or anything, then you know that you've lost a litre of water so that there is a leak somewhere. And as you can see in this one here, you can see the water table's high because there's sediment all around the place. So you know now that this is near enough constantly underwater. And also you can see that the scale has built up all the way around it. So somebody previously, a water meter reader, has obviously cleaned the lid off that so we can get to the reading. One thousand litres would get you approximately thirteen baths, twenty loads of washing, or it would give you a five-minute shower every day of the month. And really, it is quite a quite a bargain when you think about that. That that is drinking water, and they're giving you all that for the amount you pay is quite good value. 
Okay, I've now emptied out the rest of the water using the sponge because I want to show you how you can actually stop the mains water coming into your house. So let's say now if you needed to change your stopcock and you didn't want the water coming into the house. Well, if you have a look, can you see that valve there on the left-hand side of the water meter? Well, all I need to do is twist that. So if I turn that like there, and now that will stop the water coming into the house. Obviously, double check, run your main tap in your kitchen, your drinking water, and then hopefully you'll find that all the pressure's gone. And then when you've changed your stopcock or done whatever you need to do inside the house, then you can just, you can just turn it back on again, like so. So a lot of people like to do this when they go away on holiday. So then if they did ever have a leak in the house, they know then that it's not going to get completely flooded depending on where your stopcock is because a lot of people's stopcock might be underneath the kitchen sink in which case then if the pipe coming up to that is leaking then you can still have a lot of damage done to your house so a lot of people do like to turn this off when they go away on holiday. Okay so we're all done now so I just need to close it up so I'm going to get the polystyrene plug I'm just going to put it on the top there to stop any debris and frost getting down and then I'm just going to close the lid and then apply, apply a bit of pressure to these bits here and there we go, it's all closed up again. So I hope you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care, bye now.